So if I had to describe my prototypical most valuable player, the ideal NBA player, it would be an athletic above six foot five player who has the ability to pull up and drain a three, catch and shoot drain a three, and has a bag to create his own shot at the mid range while having above average playmaking ability uh, to deal with double teams and generally facilitate offense. And if they have some defensive chops and are able to guard um, players of that same description, even better. D does that uh, description ring any bells or make you think of any NBA players, though? Well, it, it, <laughs> I'm sure that's every team's dream player. Like You just described all of the attributes needed in someone to be a, a top 50 player of all time. And we have two of those in this series here. That's right. Kevin Durant and Kawhi Leonard very much fit those in their own unique ways and just at a macro look they absolutely lived up to that Kawhi drops 38 points i think five assists i can't remember the efficiency off the top of my head but it's ridiculous kevin durant around the 30 point mark the efficiency a bit of a knock i'm hearing on kevin durant for not getting more shots off uh, but also 10 assists uh, i don't think he has an attempted field goal in the third quarter but five assists so got a lot of the playmaking at the very least um the this game was so electric with that every time they guarded each other i i got maybe it's just stan van gundy in my head saying it every time they guard each other how much he loved it but it certainly rubbed off on me uh, the Clippers go up early. The Suns are able to whittle into that lead in the second. They have their own run to get ahead eight in the third. They do uh, cough it up. The Clippers get it back. And then the duel like just is so electric in those last few minutes. Uh, Kawhi drains two three-pointers, sets up a third. KD has a ridiculous catch-and-shoot three uh, to bring it close again. Like, that, that is what I love about basketball and why the superstar marketing strategy of the NBA has a lot of validity. It's for moments like that. But as you know, there's also a lot I hate about the NBA. I hate the refing oftentimes, and this was the worst ref game I've seen in the playoffs. Uh, some standout highlights were Booker having contact on a Westbrook layup attempt that they somehow then attributed the foul to Aiton, who quite literally did not touch Russell Westbrook. That's an old classic, though, where where a player with less fouls takes the foul call for the other guy. Well, you should have seen the look on Aiton's face when you realized he was getting called for the foul. And, and that was big because Booker already had two fouls. There was another really brutal call where he had fantastic defense all night. You probably saw the highlight of him intercepting the pass to Kawhi, running, catching out of bounds, and behind the back flicking it to, I can't remember if it was Craig or someone else, uh, who goes the other way. And then a brutal, enough, like an and one call I absolutely hate on Gordon, who touches whatever that player was getting a layup, like the most minimal incidental, non doing anything contact. Uh, at the same time, Booker like literally whacked Bones Highland in the face and didn't get anything called. It felt like the whistle really leaned the Suns way overall. And I know some Suns fans were unhappy about a KD foul on Kawhi where he kind of touched the elbow and nothing else before the jumper went up. That was the only bad one I was aware of for the Suns. Uh, but overall, I, I really felt like the whistle went the Clippers way. But it's okay. Scott Foster will be crew chief for at least one of these games. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so perfect. Although he might not even need to be asked to impose the, on this series, given the performance from Chris Paul in this, this game one. Well, he had one play that absolutely infuriated me. <laughs> right after uh, Kevin Durant drained that three, Kawhi's bringing the ball up. He launches himself at Kawhi's arm. I, I couldn't get an alternate angle on the highlight. I don't know if it was a clean knockout or he caught arm. 
what I know is definite bullshit is the foul that got called on Kawhi after as he hustled for the ball. He doesn't touch Chris Paul. He just goes after the ball. There's no contact in any way that looks like a foul. And Chris Paul is shooting bonus free throws, uh, which of course make the game exciting. Make it close. Put more pressure on the Clippers. Create a false situation like to the game. Um, to what actually happened in the game that makes it tighter, more important, puts more pressure on the Clippers and makes it that much harder to win and that much more epic. Um, the other thing I hated, I'm going to fast forward and then rewind, is the timeouts and fouling or the timeout breaks and, and just the use them to advance the ball and cut to commercials. There was a really brutal sequence where Clippers free throws, Suns timeout, advance the ball, try and get the inbound, don't get the pass off, call another timeout, back to a commercial break. So there was literally zero seconds of game time and like three minutes of commercials. And just like it, it takes all the momentum, all the hypeness away. Like I, I was just flashing back to my happy place of tennis while watching. Like it, it is the worst sport to view in the clutch by a mile. And I hate the NBA for that. Um, it, football has a similar issue with the timeouts at end of games, but usually it, they're 30 second timeouts and you stay on the field. And there's only three timeouts a half. So it feels less painful throughout the game. And you understand the timeouts have the purpose of stopping the time when their only purpose is to advance the ball forward or to just give yourself another chance to inbound the like 90 second break feels a lot less necessary and a lot more painful. So I loved KD versus Kawhi. I hated the refing. I hated Chris Paul. I hated the timeouts and Russell Westbrook broke my brain. Owen. <laughs> like this, this is the, this is the all time quintessential Russell Westbrook. 2023 game so three of 19 uh, from the field turnovers and, but then such an impactful player in this game his fingerprints were all over it and it was evident from the first quarter like like right from the get-go you saw him jacking up a three with eric borden wide open one swing pass away you saw him just trying to get these quick pull up mid-range and transition before the offense set up with against a set defense for no good reason but then you also saw him running around the court like a madman uh getting blocks getting tap outs forcing the sun's offense to reset so it was mixed feelings right from the get-go uh you saw him with a terrible pass after a clippers timeout around the three minute mark uh ruining the play Ty Lu drain uh chalked up and then you saw insane offensive rebounding um getting the Clippers many extra possessions like that was really what won them the game there was a minute to go and they needed a bucket and they needed defense but the best defense is a good offense and if you can just continue to attack like they had 40 seconds of just offensive rebounds and I think Westbrook was responsible for two of them uh a nice assist to Kawhi off of one of them for one of those two threes I mentioned earlier that he drained to help go ahead. And then um, it with a Suns team who did a fairly good job denying Kawhi the ball, which is something the Suns are going or the Clippers are going to have to look at. Uh, Westbrook, it is a blessing and a confidence and something guys like Ben Simmons could learn from to not be afraid of the moment. Um, wasn't afraid of the moment and he draws a foul against Devin Booker goes to the free throw line and stone ice clutch knocks drains them both um which led to that timeout sequence I was complaining about earlier and then I I think the best defensive play I've ever seen to win a game stays with Booker gets the block jumps out and throws it against Booker as he's complaining to the refs yeah, uh, to turn the ball over and get them the the Clippers the possession to ice the game uh best brick I think is the nickname going off Russell best brick has broken my brain and I truly do not know what to think of the performance he put in um but if you listen to 
almost anyone who has played and coached at the highest level, they were very happy to have him on the court. So when I don't know what to say, you take your cues from Ty Lu and Kawhi Leonard. An awesome series, an awesome first slate of game ones. And we are looking forward to getting into the depths of these first round series as we go along this week.